hi and welcome to my channel so for luscious in this video we are going to talk about the whole prince harry and duchess Meghan markle and the entire messed up way that the british public are have been towards her as well as um the latest revelations from the prince i also aim to give some perspective because if the British media did not see this coming, more for them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so three years ago, Prince Harry released a statement via the palace to express his sadness and hurt due to the way that the British media were harassing his soon-to-be wife, Meghan Markle. At the time, they were just simply boyfriend and girlfriend, they were dating, they become exclusive and it's at the moment they came out official and I think it was at the, um, there's a game in Australia, the Invictus Games um, is when it became more official that they were an item that the media onslaught swooped on them um, like it was Princess Diana all over again. Please note, um, Kate didn't get this much attention and so I think some people are a bit butthurt about that. The statement was released on the 8th of November in 2016, okay, so that's three years ago. Um, in regards to the British media and public, it said, interest in him has been there since he was a child. Um, he's aware that there is a significant curiosity about his private life. He has never been comfortable with this. You see, he told y'all he was not comfortable with this intrusion in his private life. He has tried to develop a thick skin about the level of media interest that comes with it. Okay, so the statement went on to say, but the past week has seen a line crossed. His girlfriend, Meghan Markle, has been the subject to a wave of abuse and harassment. Some of this has been very public. The smear on the front page of a national newspaper, the racial undertones of comment pieces, and the outright sexism and racism of social media trolls and web article comments. Some of it has been hidden from the public. The nightly legal battles to keep defamatory stories out of the papers. Her mother having to struggle past photographers in order to get to her front door. The attempts of reporters and photographers to gain illegal access um, to her home, or it says entry to her home, and the calls to the police that followed. So it goes on to say that Prince Harry is worried about Mrs. Ms. Marco safety and is deeply disappointed that he's not been able to protect her. He knows com commentators will say this is the price he ha she has to pay and that this is all part of the game. He strongly disagrees. This is not a game, it is, it is her life and his. So now we fast forward to 2020. Prince Harry has married the love of his life in a beautiful ceremony that should have highlighted to all how they view their world. A gospel choir, a young cello player from Nottingham, a mix of modernity and tradition, Hollywood meets royalty. It was a beautiful ceremony. So I listened to the Kingdom Choir ever since um, I saw the wedding and I absolutely love that album. If you, if you don't listen to them, you should give them a go. I will even, I even want to go see, um, if I was able to, I would go see, um, is it Cheka, Shaku, Cheka, the cello player. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> he also became a father for the first time and chose not to do the maternity step photo up that Kate has done and other his mum did and other royals tend to do and he simply released a picture when they were ready to do so. The same media who slagged them off, especially his bride, were indignant. They wanted their cake and eat it too. Something that they that many are accusing the Sussex, the Sussexes of wanting. Hmm, you know, pot kettle. The tabloids essentially they want to be nasty to them, be horrible to them, um, get all these um 
create a negative narrative surrounding them and then they want to get rewarded too with exclusive pictures because there is a royal rota for um photography and events and things and harry ain't eight harry is not here for it um <laughs> harry said i am not the one okay he's not the one and he's not having it british media has had articles asking um leading up to the birth of archie british media had articles and there was things on morning television and this that and the third asking um stuff like so will archie be black considering that harry is white Meghan Markle is mixed race um so a baby white a mixed race you know that's a less and less um african dna as time goes by if it continues on down that path so no um baby archie is not black but he is mixed with he is mixed he is white with a mix what would you say he's white mixed you know yeah he's predominantly white okay <laughs> um so yeah, I don't know how people fail to understand genetics, but I guess if people want to cling to a one drop rule that never, ex that don't make sense, then that's on them. Yeah, so I'm quite surprised that such basic knowledge failed, has failed the British media and the British public. Um, Cause even though Britain, um, they did not have a one drop law per se, they were enslavers. British people enslaved Africans and benefited from that wealth and glory, okay? So, and they knew how the racial mixtures were. And if you know the names given to the different slaves, you know they know how much, how they categorized how much black was in someone compared to how much wasn't and all that jazz, okay? So they know, they're just trying to pretend like they don't know. Anyway, so, as time went on, the press have vilified them for not gaining access to their private life, especially baby Archie. Elton John sorted a holiday for them with the carbon footprint being offsetted and all hell break loose again. Now, I looked up carbon offset. So offs to have a carbon offset, that means that if you, say, take a private jet or you take a plane, you pay for um, carbon reduction you pay for like some carbon reduction elsewhere so it will pay f to reduce carbon elsewhere so it kind of like balances it out so elsewhere the carbon's being reduced you're doing what you're doing and it's so like a balancing act um and elton john came out he did say that he um had the carbon footprint offsetted so but that wasn't good enough for the british media you know british people you are never satisfied and i'm so you know I'm British too, but I, I, I do get sad about some time. <laughs> so um, what I don't get is, um, why were the press livid that Meghan and Harry are taking a break from all, from all this stuff going on? Um, most royals fly private. The Queen definitely pri flies private. I don't see her on British Airways um, getting down in first class, you know. She flies private. She also has her own train. That own that is not a train that the public get on, you know. At ninety three, she's still driving, you know, and that's fine. She drives a big car, so what's the what's the real problem here? You know, Prince Charles has spoken about the environment. Yeah, so Meghan and Harry they speak about the environment. They're very into, pretty much into their charitable endeavors. Um, and people said, how can they talk about the environment and then go take a private jet or then go take a holiday? If every single one of those journalists complaining, every single one of those people complaining, they all take holidays. So they need to shut up. Okay. Prince Charles has spoken about the environment for an eternity and no one is telling him, oh, so you're talking about the environment, don't go, don't go on holiday. You know? Um... So I don't know, is it because Prince Charles is the next in line and they don't want to upset him because he can be like, off with their heads, <laughs> you know? How does it work, really? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, the Queen, Prince Charles, that's the Queen's son, but Harry's the Queen's grandbi grandson, so, you know, it's all the Queen's family. So now we are here. 
Harry and Meghan spent six weeks in Canada. They enjoyed it. They came back and said, you know what? We will give you what you want. They plan to step down as senior royals, um, but they will still show up for the Queen and support her. They are not giving the biased tabloid press access to them and their events. Only those who have not been nasty. They will also open up access to new journalists and independent media, which I think that's a good thing, you know? The, um, and you know, I think that's a really good thing. So I look forward to seeing um, some independent journalists get access to the Royals. That's gonna be a beautiful thing. Um, now, as they, they will transition to financial, in, in doing so, they're gonna transition from financial independence. A lot of people keep talking about public money, public money, public money. I think the British are, are obsessed with public money. It's like, okay, so the money comes from, from the public, but it's in a government pool, and the government decides what is done with the money. The public do not decide what's done with that money. If the public want to decide what's done with public money when their local council, takes council tax off them, then they can go and vote and influence at the local level. At the government level, the national government level, it's a different ball game. I mean, the royals, they're a national institution, but they are also real people with real lives, with feelings, and it is what it is. Even like if you was on benefits, the British put, and you bought a TV, why are they buying a flat screen TV? They're on benefits. I don't pay my taxes for that. They're on benefits. Why are they doing that? That's my tax money. That's the British for you. Instead of they thinking, okay, it is what it is, you know? Why are they so pressed? Okay, so as I was saying, they're gonna to transition to financial independence as do many royals, you know, like the Beatrices and, Eu and Eugene's, Prince Andrew's children. You know, Prince Andrew needs to not be a senior royal. Uh, if read about him in the newspapers okay and so the media and the people are like they need to lose their royal titles how can they be royalty and step down from being senior <laughs> even if prince harry decided that he was cutting off the royal family completely you know what because he is the Queen's grandson, he is still a prince. Because he is Prince Charles's son, he is still a prince. Because he is Princess Diana's son, he is still a prince. Because he is from royal stock, he is still royalty. Titles are just for... What's the word? The titles, they're just for, you know, I don't know, state and pageantry and formalisation, but... He's still a prince. He's keeping his titles, okay? Um, and also, please note as well, Harry inherited a lot of money alongside his brother William from his mum, Princess Diana. Um, he, even if they were not to use, um, so even when they transitioned to, not, to being financially independent, he's not poor. He's, he's not gonna want for anything. Archie's still going private school, you know, he's still going to be living that good life and, you know, he's still going to be better off than me and you and all those nasty journalists, okay? So, yeah, um, I like their new website, it looks good, um, it's nice to know um, their philanthropy will still continue and I wish them well. I wish them well, you know, I just think that given the continued onslaught of hate that they receive and every single thing they do is being micro, there's microaggressions against them. It's on the internet right now. I just, <laughs> if you say, what about Prince Andrew? People say, well, Prince Andrew was dealt with. No, it was not. He was just told to hide away for a little bit. So yeah, I think Prince, I like, I've always, Prince Harry has always been the fun prince anyway. So. And he's never going to be king unless some unlikely event was to happen. So in a way, it's like they can't alienate, the royal family cannot alienate him much. And the British public need to remember that. And also, you know, it is what it is. He ain't going to be king. Let the man do what he wants to do with him and his family. If you guys were a bit nicer to his wife, maybe he would he would keep it up and one thing that you lot are forgetting 
He was a, he was an RAF. Pat, it was in the RAF, so he's a veteran, a war veteran at that, because he did serve in a few tours as well. So he's paid his due. He's let, he needs his titles are staying where they are, and he's off to La La Land. So I just hope, like him, like the Sussexes, I can find my happy place. Um, I don't know where my La La Land is. Um, I was born in the UK. Um, so try. Let me find. Let me find a country I can go spend six months of the year in. <laughs> Anyway, so what, tell me what do you think about the whole Harry and Meghan thing and you can read the statement from 2016 I'll leave a link in my description box and yeah thanks for watching <laughs>